Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. We're back with The Binding of Isaac. I was going to play Gradius Gaiden, but I'm having some issues with my retro setup over here, so we just got to do what we got to do. So let's dive into this. Like always, I'm going to be answering viewer questions, so if you guys have any questions, put them down in the comments. And they can be questions about your life. They can be questions just for me. They can be questions about anything. Do you need to know about the hyperosmotic medullary interstitial in the islets of Langerhans and the pancreas? I might be able to answer that, maybe. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be playing as Bethany. I got some advice from some people that unlocking or beating the game with her or the various unlocks you can get are like the best ones in the game to help you out, to give you access to new items to help with the other characters. So we're going to be doing her. We need to do the beast and then like just the normal route with her. So let's do it. I have played her a bit. She has this item up in the top left called the Book of Virtues, and it really just kind of like gives you these little orbs around you um, to add, you know, extra firepower. But if the orb touches anything, it, it gets destroyed. So it's just kind of like a temporary buff. However, she has a really neat mechanic where any active item you get becomes part of your Book of Virtues. And if you get like an item that has like a one room charge on it, then she can become very powerful because you can get one of these, like, nice. So you saw it destroyed my fire there. You can get one of those uh, little wisps that float around here, like, every room. And all of a sudden, you can be, like, throwing out a giant barrage of stuff. They also will sometimes, the little wisps, gain a... Uh, ah, man. Eh, we'll come back to it later. They will also gain, like, abilities, like, maybe fire or you know, frost or other little buffs, depending on which item is paired up with the book. So when I first tried to play her, I was so confused about what was happening. <laughs> and then I learned kind of how she worked. And she might be one of like my favorite characters. She's definitely one of the more powerful characters. All right. Sorry, the game volume is like really low. I don't want it to like interfere and pick up on my microphone. So I basically have it off. So it's kind of disorienting playing. All right, uh, let's see here. Oh, the other thing about her is she can't get soul hearts. So she can't get those armor hearts we talked about. Um, all of those go towards adding like extra charges onto her little book. So you can see that like blue pip at the top. I have four charges recharges my, my book of virtues. I actually have seven charges stacked up right now. Four from the spirit hearts, you can see from the below the keys on the top left, and then now four from clearing rooms. You get a little pip for every room. So we'll we'll grab another little wisp here to help us. So it makes spirit hearts with her very like they're less valuable because they don't they don't really help protect you. Um, also, I think she just automatically gets angel deals instead of devil deals which is cool because um, I think the angel deal meta is better <laughs> in repentance over the original game. But enough talking about that. Let's talk about something fun. I just got back from the, the convention I said I was going to, the Game Jam South in Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, man, it was great. Everybody was so friendly. Everybody was so nice. Had a lot of kids and families walk up to me that saying they really enjoyed my uh, content. They watch it with their dad and stuff. Crack the sky. So you can see in the top left, now I now have like a, an item on top of my book. The book opened up and accepted that item into it. Crack the sky used to be a terrible, terrible, terrible item, but now I hear it's like a boss killer. So let's go try it out and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it did some work. <laughs> it did some work for sure. Oh, man, you see that? I always say, that's that's instinct. You can't learn that. The way you just walk into that, that damage speed up, that'll be good. We don't have any bombs. I don't know what to do. There's a red heart on the ground. So let's do our due diligence. Let's, let's go over here and go in the curse room and see what we get. Not much. Not much. 
ah, I'm not even going to play that guy. I don't think he'll pay out. You can sacrifice red hearts to that little demon beggar. And if you get lucky, and I mean lucky, <laughs> he might pay out with something, but he won't. Okay. What did we do with her? Let's see what we've got. We've got... We killed Mom's heart. We need to go after the beast. We don't have any of the Polaroids. So we've not just beat, like, the game standard. We beat Hush. I don't know if we've done Boss Rush or not. I can't... I can't tell. We're just going to go standard route. Anyway, this convention was great. I spent so much money. I spent so much money. I sold some stuff to Phoenix Resale. And... Dude, dude offered me, like, fantastic prices. He paid me more than I would have gotten selling them on eBay. I literally, like, looked up the eBay prices and, like, put them on Post-its and stuck them on the, the games. And, like, a game was, you know, 25 bucks. He'd be like, we take 20? Yeah, of course, man. <laughs> Seems totally fair. A lot of that stuff I paid, like, a buck and two <laughs> each for it. So I came out ahead. See, that little guy's shot hit one of my wisps and knocked it out of commission. Oh! So we just randomly fire those, like, rays of light down from heaven, I guess, since we have that item in our book. That's kind of cool. I wonder how often it fires, and I wonder if it's tied to, like, our luck stat. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. <laughs> we'll, t we'll take it. It might be pretty powerful. Oh, it does that when I lose a wisp. That's what it is. Okay. What's in our item room here? God's flesh. This gives like a, a bonus to our shots that will shrink enemies and then you can like step on them. But the problem is they get so small like you don't see them or think to step on them. So it doesn't really even do much. We'll take it anyway. <laughs> I got in a conversation with someone while I was at this convention. I don't know what's going on with this guy, but and why he thought it would be perfectly fine to talk to a stranger about conspiracy theories. <laughs> but he had some good ones. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> what he said, it would probably offend a great number of people out there. I was offended, and I'm not easily offended, but uh, it got me thinking about conspiracy theories and like what I would consider to be good conspiracy theories. Not good as in like, Something good happened, but good is in unique and possibly plausible, but mainly entertaining. And my favorite one of all time involves Coca-Cola. <laughs> and someone who seemed to have some like insider knowledge told me this once. And I think that I possibly believe them. And I will say I have not fact-checked this this conspiracy theory <laughs> at all. But it, it like like most conspiracy theories, it just kind of like feels right. So uh he claims, and like I said, I have not fact-checked this, that, well, first, let me give a little backstory. So in the, the early to mid-80s, Coca-Cola classic, as we all know and love, uh, ceased to exist. And Coca-Cola came out with this just truly atrocious <laughs> drink called New Coke that essentially no one in the world liked. And... They ran that for about six months, and then at which point they were like, sorry guys, we messed up. Everybody hates New Coke. We're going back to the old formula. Good old Coca-Cola Classic. Everybody was thrilled. Everybody rejoiced. We had Coca-Cola Classic back. Now, if you look at what Coca-Cola says, they're like, we didn't realize people identified with the brand so much and, you know, all that corporate mumbo jumbo they say. Now, here's the conspiracy theory. My friend, who has some insider knowledge or so, I think, <laughs> claims that you can't just change the flavor of something like Coke. You can't just do it like people know you can't, you can't change the price too much. People get up in arms about it. And so what you have to do is do something like reset the collective consciousness of basically an entire world and make them forget what they love before you pull the old switcheroo on them. So he claims that 
Coke wanted to make a big change and they couldn't just change it overnight so everybody would be pissed. So what they did was take Coca-Cola off the market for six months and introduced a truly terrible product called Coca-Cola or New Coke. And then, oh, let's see if I can find my secret room. Where could it be? Oh, hold on. Let's side story. Side story. Let's talk about the game. Secret rooms maybe right here. There we go. So he claims what Coca-Cola did was that they to erase the collective consciousness of the entire world and make everybody forget what Coca-Cola tasted like. For six months, they got rid of it and instead put out new Coke that everybody hated. And then they brought back Coca-Cola Classic and everybody's like, oh, I love that. It's like the Coke I remember, but it wasn't. What they changed was that's when they switched from using real sugar to corn syrup. If they had just, let me pause the game. If they had just switched from real sugar to corn syrup overnight, everybody would have noticed. But instead, they took Coke off the market for six months, introduced new Coke. Then when they brought Coca-Cola Classic back, that's when they did the old switcheroo. Now, I don't know if that's true, but it feels right. <laughs> like all conspiracy theories. <laughs> Let's use this as a point to, to answer a viewer question. So this one is from a channel member. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. You have no idea how much that means to me. But it's Louise D. 2066. And he asks, Did I enjoy Metal Gear Solid on the original PlayStation? And do I like bow and arrow mechanics in video games? He says, I really enjoyed Metal Gear Solid when I was younger, but I've grown impatient and the same goes with bow and arrow mechanics. I can't stand them and never really like to play with them. Well, <laughs> I did play Metal Gear Solid when I was younger. I rented it on the PlayStation 1 and did not get it. I didn't understand how to play. I thought I was just supposed to run around and shoot everybody and I was just getting annihilated. I did not play it again until I was an adult. And I have to stay, say that stealth mechanics in games, like, they're pretty benign to me. I don't mind them. I don't really love them. I don't really dislike them either. They're just kind of like a general gameplay, like I said, mechanic. I don't think about it too much. This is a, uh, a nickel, but it's glued down. Let's, the game just trolling is hard, right? Let's waste a bomb for our nickel. Anyway, uh, so stealth mechanics don't really bother me. What does bother me with Metal Gear Solid is what I'd like call the esoteric BS that's involved with it. Like when it says, tune in on your radio to the number on the back of the case, and you're like, what? You like run around the game for three and a half hours looking for some case. And what they mean is like the video game box case on the back of Metal Gear Solid that has a picture of you talking on the radio and that's the the number you're supposed to tune into so if you don't have the case there's like no way you would ever know how or to do that or like you're supposed to go in a first person view to look at under a tank to disarm a bomb i kind of hate that sort of stuff i feel like there's no way to figure it out in the game without just an insane amount of trial and error so yes i do lose my patience with stuff like that um as for bow mechanics well before moving on to the bow mechanics I think, I think, Louise D, you might just be getting a little older. As you get older, you lose your patience with a bunch of BS. <laughs> I certainly have. Uh, there's no doubt about that in my mind, that I'm not as patient as I once was with stuff that I deemed to be, like, not worthy of my time. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from. I, I do find things like that to be irritating quite often. God, I didn't know that guy could do that. Shoot that creep over at me. Um, as for bow and arrow mechanics, I kind of feel the same way about those. They're not my preferred mechanic. I'd much rather have like a gun or something. And I think firing a bow in a game can be clunky. The best game with bow mechanics I've ever played, I think, is Horizon Zero Dawn. And I have not played the new Horizon game, guys. But the, the original one that came out um, had really good bow and arrow mechanics. The game was kind of built around that. And I have to say, when I first started, I felt like I couldn't hit anything. And the game was very forgiving with that. You didn't really have to like hit very many. I mean, it was better if you hit the uh, the weak point of the enemies, but if you didn't, like it was okay. It just did a little bit less damage. It knocked off some armor to make your other shots that went, oh my God, make your other shots that landed later better. 
So I, I feel kind of like okay about those two things. Just the general stealth and bow mechanics are just, eh, they're whatever. I'm not a huge fan of them, but I don't really dislike them that much either. But the esoteric stuff I mentioned before, like Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> I do. I do have a little bit of a dislike for that. So I wish I could give you more firm answer. I play a lot of games, so there are, there are many other things that drive me more crazy than those. I'll put it that way. Speaking of driving me crazy, I'm drinking some LaCroix here, as my wife and all people in France would say. I'm going to butcher this. LaCroix? LaCroix here. This is the beach plum flavor. You can see it right there. Focus. Focus. There we go. Beach plum. Now, I do not associate plums with the beach in any way. I can't think of one beachy thing that makes me think of plums. I think of like Christmas when I think of plums. So, If you've ever had LaCroix or LaCroix, you'll be firmly aware that like it essentially has little to no flavor. As some comedian said, it was like they waved fruit in front of the can. <laughs> now, I can taste some plum in this. Oh, just a, a hint of it in essence, as the can says. But let me tell you right now, I don't know what about it makes it beachy. It definitely has a beachiness to it, I will, I will say. It kind of tastes like sunscreen, <laughs> if I had to describe it. But I have drank a ton of this over the last week and I cannot figure out what the flavor is. I don't want to like look it up. I know I can just look online and somebody will be like, it's coconut. It's not coconut. I don't think it's coconut. Um, or like pina colada. It, it, it just tastes like, like almost like soap. But if any of you guys have tried this, tell me what you think about it. I don't think it's very good. I also don't really like LaCroix that much. Um, I mean, it's fine. It's, I wish it was like more refreshing than it actually is. But groceries are so expensive. I went and like Target and I think you could get like three. I wonder how this works. That's a two room charge. Let's go with this. Uh, LaCroix was like three for $10, which was like 60% off of the price they've been charging or something. It was unreal. I couldn't believe it. We're definitely going to buy this. Um, I'll buy this as well. Now the jumper cables could have been good. Let's let's just bomb our donation machine here. I kind of can't remember what the jumper cables do. I think that they they give me more charges somehow. So one cent away, brilliant. So we can, let's see if we can find that one that one cent. Um, so I went crazy and I bought like. $30 worth of LaCroix. So now I'm stuck drinking it because my wife sure as heck isn't going to drink the stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of the flavors are very weird. Sometimes I wish they just had like normal flavors. It's always like cucumber banana. <laughs> it's like a terrible pairing. I don't think that's one. That's really disgusting. But it's always something weird like that. Anyway, how do you guys feel about LaCroix? I think it's okay. Walmart has this like generic carbonated fizzy water soda thing that's actually sweet. I think it's better, but it's certainly like less would be the word sophisticated. I know when I drink water by myself in my game room full of children's toys that uh, I need to feel as sophisticated as possible. That's why I always wear a, a tuxedo if it's after 6 p.m kidding i've worn that tuxedo like i think one time since i started this youtube channel and it was for the youtube channel there's not a lot of like formal gigs going on these days and i don't play in an orchestra anymore so i don't have much reason to bust out the old tuxedo these days and the one i wore was like my informal tuxedo the i have one with tails on it for when i was like a featured soloist and stuff Great. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. How far are we into this? 19 minutes. Uh, let's see what we got going on. Maybe we can do like a greed run really quickly. Uh, have I done greed with her? I have done greedier mode with her. Have I done greedier mode with the keeper? I have not. 
Let's try it. This will be a disaster. Let's also use this as a moment to read our next viewer question. Like I said, guys, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, just ask. Like, I'll, I'm happy to give personal advice as best as I can. I'm happy to answer anything about myself within reason. So we have another one from G Graham 4742 and he says, how did I get into gaming and what inspired me to start the channel? Those are some good questions. Uh, how did I get into gaming? Well, uh, when I was like five years old, I was at my cousin's house and they had gotten a Nintendo and I had never seen a video game before. And I was just like enthralled by it. So I begged for one for Christmas and uh, I got it. <laughs> Thanks mom and dad. They bought me a Nintendo and I, I got it on Christmas Eve, believe it or not. And um, stores are, I don't think there are stores in this, but um, I'm drowsy, that's okay. Anyway, uh, so I fell in love with it. Let's see here. I could use a bomb right here on this. Let's see what we get. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was really good. Well, we'll buy growth hormones here for sure. Anyway, so I'm playing as the keeper. He doesn't have health. He has like these coins. When you get hit, you lose a coin, but you can pick up a coin to recharge it. So he should be pretty good in greed considering the ground's just covered in coins like all the time. His shot speed's very slow though. Uh, so this is going to be crazy, and a lot of you probably won't believe me about this, but I, I swear to you it's true. My father was 60 years old when I was born crazy huh and so like in my teenage years he was like in his mid 70s he was a little ill kind of sickly so i had to spend a lot of time like taking care of him so i couldn't really like go out of the house for too long i, I could go play with my friends and stuff but not for more than an hour so i was at home most of the time and i basically just sat inside like practicing guitar and playing video games and reading i feel like i read like every book at the public library um but I played a lot of video games, and so they always just kind of like meant a lot to me, so I just kind of always kept playing them. I just never stopped. Uh, the longest I ever went without playing video games, I, I would be playing like WoW, like World of Warcraft, or some MMORPG, like Ultima Online, or something like that, and really not focusing on quote-unquote standard-style video games, but those are still video games as well, and like I was playing those. You better believe I was playing a lot of WoW like everybody else was. Um, but that, that's kind of how I got into gaming. Starting the YouTube channel is a harder question. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, I was writing like reviews for Game Facts, and I was getting like, you know, I, I was, I got review of the month a couple times, and I got reviewer of the month a couple times, or like content creator of the month, or whatever they wanted to call it, um, which was, you know, nice. Uh, what do I want to take in here? Did we we opened this other door, didn't we? We did. I'm gonna buy us for some shot for some range. Our range is pretty bad. Uh, but I was writing for Game Facts, and you know, I was like critically acclaimed. People loved my reviews, but like people just didn't read them. You know, like getting a hundred views on one of your reviews was like, you know, amazing. That would be like a, a great like I wrote the review for Elden Ring on there <laughs> and you know it got like I don't know how many reviews it has now or views not reviews um but you know it was getting like 10 a day or something so I thought if I was spending all this time like writing reviews and putting all this effort into it I might as well like do something people would actually see and where I would have better content uh like more of an outlet to express my own personality I feel like I'm a much better writer than I am speaking a uh, speaker, but I don't feel like my personality comes through my writing as well. Uh, it's almost like it's a different persona, and that comes from years of like working in the scientific field. Uh, I kind of like mask any sort of um, like emotion or humor or something in my writing. I feel like subconsciously. Also, a bunch of people told me I should freaking do a YouTube channel. So <laughs> I did. Uh, God, that guy's annoying. Anyway, um, so I hope you guys like it. I, I find it very rewarding. I'm really enjoying doing the YouTube channel. I've gotten monetized. And like I said, when I started this, I never cared anything about like money. Um, 
and I still kind of don't. <laughs> you know, a little money's nice. It's nice to feel appreciated, but uh, that's not at all like my my motivation for doing it. You know, my dreams were like maybe I'll get enough money like to get a video game every couple months or something like that. And I think that's about like where I'm at right now, and that's totally fine with me. I don't really mind that at all. I'm happy with that. Of course, now I have a a channel member, so I've at least got a little bit of money coming in every month. But this isn't about money. I have two jobs. I make I make a decent living, guys. So I'm not doing this because I need to do it. I'm doing it because I want to. And I think you guys can tell that. I mean, we'll take the onk. I don't think this... Does this do anything? It literally does nothing. That's fantastic. Okay. Thanks for that, guys. That also does nothing right there. That basically does nothing. We could re-roll. Um, I should probably buy this key while it's on sale. And then... Oh, man. This is, this is a tough break here. Let's go ahead and re-roll now. That could be really good, but I think we need to keep the wooden nickel. Oh, thanks, guys. What do they say? A penny wasted is just a penny wasted. <laughs> I was trying to make a good joke with like, a penny saved is a penny earned. It didn't come out right. I should have workshopped that one. Let's think of another topic to talk about. We've talked about LaCroix. We've talked about my history with gaming we've talked about what else did we talk about earlier i can't remember oh the convention convention was great it's my first time being like a special guest for my video game playing or at least youtube channel no one's going to invite me anywhere for my video game playing <laughs> that's not my strong suit we're going to run over this right here and stop the waves temporarily so we can catch up we're getting a little behind guys we don't have enough damage to to deal with these guys so what we can do is uh you can see in the in the top right corner top top right top left corner under the keys it says five of eleven there's eleven waves and they keep coming as this timer over here counts down and so if i uh don't kill them fast enough they'll, they'll overwhelm me but i can step on that and take damage and stop it at like wave five as you can see man shut up I don't know if that would be any good or not. That just gives trinkets. Let's let's keep trying to re-roll here. The speed belt would not be bad. I am a little slow. All right, we're going to leave that one key on the ground just to have something heal us if we get hit. If you can get three syringes, you get a, what's called a transformation called spun, and that gives you a pretty decent damage upgrade. And uh, we got two syringes like right off the bat. Our... Two of our first three items were syringes. We got whatever the red one is. I don't think it does too much. And then growth hormones, which gives us a little bit of a speed and damage upgrade. I can't quite remember, but um, it's good. It's one of the good ones. Anyway, we need another syringe. So that's what we're, we're kind of praying for at the moment. So we can get that spun transformation, which would be chef's kiss. That was weird. Why did I do that? Oh, chef's kiss. There you go. That's less um perverse <laughs> that's a good way to put it less perverse okay we'll take the speed belt that will give us a shot speed up or a shot rate up there we go but tear damage down that's not great it's not great you can do what you can Having this triple shot is really beneficial, but like, it's not like it like gives you three times the damage. It like, you know, every one of these shots or all three of them are not going to hit every enemy, you know. So it does split up your damage, but it also like nerfs your fire rate immensely to the point where you feel like extremely, I'm going to use the death card on these guys. I was saving it for the right time and I used it too late anyway. Okay, let's just go for it. I, we should be getting an angel deal this time because the uh, the first floor was a devil deal and I ignored it. So 
If you ignore the devil deals, you get angel deals. We try to be a, a, a good, a good, <laughs> a good, a good character. And uh, so hopefully we get something good. You can't really take devil deals with this character because you have to sacrifice your health and you can't really get any more. I don't know what this is. Soul Locket. Sure, you gave me a bunch of flies. I, I guess that's what it does. I don't know. We still have these discounted items in here. What does this do? Range plus look up. The screw. The screw is so good. Oh, uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. That was close, but not quite there. Oh, uh, we need one more cent. How can we get one cent? So, I think we bomb that and try to get lucky. We didn't get lucky, guys. We did not get lucky. We try walking in here. Also did not get lucky. And now we're like one hit from death, which is terrifying. Man, maybe there'll be one down here. Nope. Once again, no such luck. There it is. There's, oh, wait, six cents. I thought we were one away. Did I spin one somehow? Maybe I just did math incorrectly. I don't know. I don't know. That's a bummer. That would have made our shot speed much better. All right, let's just keep going down. Oh, I picked it up. That's what I did. I accidentally, when I picked it up, it refilled my health instead of giving me credit for the one cent. That's what it was. Okay. Butt bombs. Those are pretty decent. Soap is a, a shot speed up. There we go. So now, look at that. We're cooking now. What we got in here? There's some health. The Spelunker's cap doesn't really do much. We're just not getting, like, good items. Um, I'm going to run in there and try to grab that. And we're going to try to zip out of here and not get hit. Can we do it? We did it. We're going to have to re-roll. Oh, no, let's use our bombs. There we go. Oh, my God. I'm so bad at this game. I'm so bad. Those are not great items either. Uh, we'll buy the other discount key. We could take that. That'll, that'll increase our weakest uh, stat. It gives like plus one of our weakest stat. I'm bad at these guys. And these guys are bad when you're like in a race against the clock too because you can't shoot them from the front because they're wearing a mask. Just like in real life. <laughs> Everybody knows when you put on a mask you can't get shot from the front. You only get shot in the back. Oh my lord. Okay. Wow, that was... I want to say that that was all skill but I do not think it was. Oh my lord, how am I not hit? Oh, and then I run into the creep. Then I run into the creep. Oh... How fitting. I have all these like spectacular dodges and I just run right into the static thing on the ground that is easy to avoid. <laughs> oh, I should have asked. Do you guys have any conspiracy theories? That, oh man, more of these guys with the mask on. Do you guys have any conspiracy theories that you like to talk about or want to hear about that are non? Let's try to stay away from political conspiracy theories. But uh, you want me to like discuss on the next video? Maybe you can ask me what I think about the moon landing or like the JFK assassination or does jet fuel melt steel beams? It does, by the way, guys. Or at least melts them enough to where they flex them in. <laughs> it's like glass. Like, you can look up the melting point of glass. That's to liquefy it. <laughs> it doesn't have to be liquefied. Obviously, you can blow glass when it's not liquefied. When it's in like it's semi-liquid state all right can we get something good come on oh yeah we need 15 cents to buy this mediocre item right here let's do it what are we gonna get there right there there's our other syringe so we need 10 cents but this syringe is risky here it will uh let's pull these up maybe we'll get lucky it will uh also shuffle our stats around so we have to kind of pray that it it gives us a beneficial stat increase and doesn't just like totally just ruin us. Oh, he's all the way up here, huh? You're all the way up there, huh? I know, oh, good. We were talking about the masks. Here's a giant one. <laughs> what is his name? He's called the uh, Mask of Infamy. Kind of like totally suck against him. 
Yeah, I destroy his little heart over here. And then, uh, and then get up behind him. See how he, like, turns direction so quickly? At least we poisoned him, so he's taking a little bit of tick damage there. Or DOT, damage over time. There's a WoW term. I never heard that until I played WoW. Oh, my lord, dude. Come on. Radio silence here. I still have some battery. I'm still all right. My memory card's got four and a half hours of recording on it at 4K 60 frames per second, which is absurd. <laughs> uh, all right. Once again, we're one cent short. No, we're not. Let's grab it. There's spun. Fantastic. Looks like everything went up. Except for the speed of our bullets, which is, I'll take it. That seems fine. We have our one key for the next floor. Another guy that's kind of shielded. You got to shoot this guy in the butt. There's something to talk about here. This is, this is a fun conversation piece here. Whenever I go to the doctor and I'm required to get an injection of some sort, like an antibiotic or a steroid shot or something like that, they always give it to me in the butt. I don't know why. I tell my wife that, and she's like, I never get a shot in the butt. They always give it to me in the arm. I tell everybody at work, I was like, like they always give it to me in the arm. Not me. They say the hip. Nah, it's like in the butt cheek. It's definitely, oh man, a devil deal. A devil deal. Oh, you're supposed to give me an angel deal, man. We can't take it. We can't even like go in there. Oh, I hate it. We didn't get anything in our first angel deal either, other than just a bunch of like spiders, which don't do anything. Guess we're going down. Anyway, that was giving me a shot in the butt. And everybody else, I get in the arm. And it's like, I've been to like a million different doctors. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like my arms are too like jacked and huge. And uh, they need they need more meat to, to inject into. <laughs> There's the mother transformation. Is this Gemini? Pisces. Tears up. Man, we're, we're flying now. Anyway, uh, so... That was a joke, guys, by the way. My arms are not that jacked. But, I mean, they used to kind of be. I used to be, like, a big, big about working out and stuff. But since the baby's been here, not so much. I have been. What is this? It's a new item I've never seen. Uh, I've, I'm rocking the dad bod real hard. That's okay. That's what you're supposed to do when you're dad, right? <laughs> Rock the dad bod. Get a little bit more time, I'll go back to the gym. That's what everybody says. Just get a little bit more time, I'll go back to the gym. Uh, the gym owners are like, sure you will. Just keep paying your monthly membership and not showing up. I used to go to Planet Fitness. If you guys are not familiar with Planet Fitness, it's this discount gym. It's mainly like geared towards people that are just maybe not used to going to the gym that much. Um, oh my God. Uh, and they're just getting started and they're not sure if they want to commit to an expensive gym. But they do like crap that like I feel specifically derails your <laughs> gym going experience. The main one is that the one I went to would always have cookies and freaking Little Caesars pizza at the check-in. So on your way out, they're like, oh, you just worked out. Get a cookie and some pizza. So annoying. <laughs> so frustrating. And of course I did. I'd be like, I can't pass up free food. And... uh the other thing that they had was this thing called the lug alarm. So they don't want people in there like dropping weights on the floor and like grunting when they're bench pressing and stuff. So if you, let's say you're like doing a deadlift or something, you go like, Ugh! someone will go over and hit the freaking lug alarm and they'll kick you out of the gym. They'll escort you out of the door, which I mean, is kind of hilarious. Spin to win. How many floors do we have left? I think quite a few. We'll try to spend a win at least once here. I don't know what it does, but. It just gives me an orbital, huh? What do you do? Oh, oh. Oh, hold on, wait. It makes me like zip around like, oh my God. Okay, it got me killed. Well, we came back as blue baby. That's not nearly as good. And not all what we wanted to do. 
But I guess we still need to finish this as Blue Baby. So we're going to definitely not. That's what I get for taking an iron on what we did. We were going to like win this, but I blew it. Um, oh my lord. This carrying or this item, I think, is supposed to be. Remember, when we were playing as Bethany, and she had her little book that would uh, you could have like an active item on it. I think that this is like the Holy Grail active item you can get with that book. Like you just use it ten times per room. So it's good to know it's unlocked, so that like it can be gotten. Or maybe it'll let me like get out of the way of damage. I don't know. I don't know. Why was I use it near this guy? Well, that didn't work. Okay. How does this even work? Kind of like... It definitely, like, shoots you across the screen, but it's hard to aim. I don't really know how to control it. Let's try it again. What do you have to lose, right? Other than the game. <laughs> Well, it's hitting him for sure. I don't know if like it makes my whole body able to hit him or just the little top. Well, it's hitting him for sure. And we're dealing damage with it. This guy's so hard to hit. There we go. Well, death is imminent. We're one hit away from death. Let's see here. Is there... And there are no spirit hearts in here. We can play this thing and try to get some... I keep saying spirit hearts. It's soul hearts. Sorry, guys. Sorry, man. My commentary got bad all of a sudden. I'm, like, depressed that I screwed up and got killed when we had, like, the, the whole thing in the bag. And Chariot's decent. There we go. There's a soul heart. It's less decent. Going to the sun. We don't have any red hearts so I guess I, if I could buy that then I could get one little it, it also provides you with a, a a black heart so that would give us a little bit of survivability but not much man not much it would be still be a tenuous a tenuous state where we are in the game right now I think what got us was that we just didn't get any angel deals or devil deals. We got that one angel deal. Like I said, you can't take devil deals with that keeper character because you can't really replenish your life very well. Um, we got that one angel deal and there wasn't anything in there and then we never got another one. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, there we go, guys. Sorry. I threw that one away. I had it in the bag and I threw it all away. I apologize. What can I say? We'll do it again. I don't know if, like, do you guys want me to play The Binding of Isaac when, like, off camera for fun? Because <laughs> I do love the game still, but, or do you want me to just wait and play it with you guys? I might just wait and play it with you guys. It seems like a pretty good one for commentary, and nobody really cares if I win or lose. They just want to hear me talk, I think. I hope. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. Obviously not playing the game. But if you made it this far, guys, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the support. If you like the content, hit the like button comment subscribe like i said leave your your questions in the comments and i'll answer them i've answered like every one i've gotten so far if you're really a big fan of the channel and you want to consider becoming a channel member there's some really cool benefits you can get your name at the end of a video you get priority like messaging me with your comments i see them first you can get your name listed at the end of a video you also get access to me on like Twitter and Facebook and stuff, you can message me directly. If you really want to go hard and be a big spender, you can sponsor a segment of a show, like maybe like sponsor like an episode like the, the Binding of Isaac, or if you really want to go hard, you can, and this is crazy, I don't know if anybody will ever do this, maybe, I mainly put it up for my buddy who like works for a big IT company to do this, but uh, if you want to be a big spender, you can pick a game out of my backlog and I'll review it and I will dedicate the episode to you <laughs> if you want to do that. Anyway, I'm rambling. Thanks so much, guys. I'm going to go upstairs and edit this video and hopefully get it out before like it's supposed to be out. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.